Hi, today I want to talk about achieving a half a billion IOPS in a 1U Reddit server with FPGA acceleration. I'm John Lockwood, CEO and founder of Algologic Systems, and this work was done in collaboration with Xilinx, CC Integration, and Dell. So the outline is, let's first motivate the need for an ultra-high performance key value store. Talk about field programmable gate array FPGA acceleration. Talk about how we implemented a KVS solution in a 1U Dell server. It has 490 million I.O. operations per second by running the KVS and logic plus Redis and software. And finally, we'll talk about scaling this KVS beyond a billion IOPS in a 1U server, which is 40 billion IOPS in a rack. So the motivation for key value store in the cloud. So in-memory KVS systems are used widely. So Amazon has DynamoDB, which is how they keep track of all the shopping carts and all the active session stores to keep track of their users, profiles, their messages, and target promotions. DynamoDB has milliseconds of latency, and it's primarily used to retrieve small value data. So Facebook has something called RocksDB, and that's what they use to track the state of all their billions of users. They use it for graph search, and they use it as a cache for Hadoop. So this is an embedded key value store database that's written in C and C++, and it runs using memory that's in RAM and in Flash. So Microsoft, with Faster, mentions that managing large application state easily, resiliently, and with high performance is one of the hardest problems in the cloud today. So finally, with Redis, this is a KVS that's portable across all cloud providers, and it's available on on-prem deployments as well. It's open source, but it has professional support. So now the motivation for fast, high-throughput, compact KVS is that key value stores can be used for real-time big data. And so in particular, with Algologic, we have experience working with stocks, options, and futures that need to trade at nanosecond timescales. And we're doing graph analytics on big data that could require searching billions of nodes in seconds. So that's billions of IOPS. So space is at a premium in a data center. So one new server occupies the least amount of space. It's just 1.75 inches tall and 19 inches wide. And so FPGAs can dramatically increase the throughput of these servers. They also radically reduce the latency to access the data. And these FPGA cards fit in standard expansion slots in these servers. So now let's look at how we can take a 1U rack server and build this with CPUs and FPGAs and get massive throughput. So we start off with a Dell PowerEdge server. It's a 1U base. And in this server, we have two sockets. And we have two CPUs that are two AMD CPUs on the motherboard. We run Redis on both of the processors. And in fact, even on each of the threads of the processors for more parallelism. Attached to the processors is 256 gigabytes of DDR4 SD RAM. And then to get to the network, there's a NIC card. And so the reads and sets and get requests come in over the network through the NIC. We also have room in this server for three half-height expansion cards. And so we've populated these cards with FPGAs, which are three Xilinx Alveo U50 cards. And on each of these cards, they have an UltraScale Plus FPGA. And it's on that FPGA that we're running the Algologic Gateware for the key value store. So the Algologic KVS runs as Gateware on the FPGA that implements the key value store database. All these cards and the NIC are connected with high-speed Ethernet up to a top-of-rack switch. So this is a 10 gig, 25 gig Ethernet switch that can take traffic from all of the network connections in the server. And it makes all that bandwidth available to all the clients, which are Ethernet-attached compute clients. 
So typically these clients are running C and C++ software and they're using the High Redis API so that they can set and get data in any of the tables that are either running on the FPGA cards or in the Redis server and software. So here's some details of this, of this server. So this Dell PowerEdge R6525 is this one year rack server. It's got two AMD EPIC 7402 processors. Each of these has 24 cores. Each is hyper-threaded, so it's 48 threads per processor socket, and there's two. So 96-way multi-threaded. Uh, there's 16 DIMM modules that connect to these processors. That's the 256 gigabytes of memory. And then there's three half-height expansion slots in the riser cards. And so we've populated the riser cards with the Xilinx U50 cards. And these have ultra-RAM memory on the FPGA that we can access directly with the FPGA logic. And we also have the SolarFlare cloud onload NIC that's in a mezzanine slot just below this riser card. So now the software and gateware. We're running CentOS 7.7 .7 Linux operating system. Uh, we're running the SolarFlare kernel bypass cloud onload NICs. And we're running the latest version of Redis, which is 5.0.8. On the FPGAs, we're running Gateware, which is AlgoLogic's key value store. And then the clients are running software. And so these clients are running CC++ with an API for High Redis to talk to the Redis software and an API modeled on High Redis to talk to the KVS Gateware. So pretty much a standard software stack. Clients, as far as they're concerned, are just writing sets, sets and gets to multiple key value store tables over the network. So AlgoLogic's network attached key value store that runs in the FPGA logic works as follows. So it's an associative lookup engine that stores data by names and associates a value with each of those names. And so there's a number of different applications that we can use this for. We already talked about graph search and stock trading, some storage systems, data dedupe, forwarding tables and directories are all good applications of key value stores. And so in the case of the AlgoLogic KVS, the sets and get requests come in directly over the ethernet that's on the FPGA card. And we have in logic then a packet parser, a header extractor, and extract out individual key value pairs, and then send them over to the lookup engine. So the associative lookup engine runs in FPGA logic that uses on-chip memory, which in this case is ultra RAM, to pull back values out of that ultra RAM, pack it back into packets, put a header on it, and send the packet back out. So this whole stack of getting key value pairs that come in and back out are being handled entirely in logic on the FPGA without touching the processor. That's why we can get amazingly low latency and incredible throughput. So here's some more details on the FPGA card. It's a Xilinx Alveo U50. This has an ultrascale plus FPGA with 872,000 lookup tables. It's got QSFP28, so 100 gigabit ethernet connector. And this splits out to four SFP plus or SFP28 ports. Uh, the card itself is a PCIe form factor, standard expansion slot. It's a half height, single slot card. So the client software, this CC++ software is using High Redis as an API to talk to these key value store tables over the network. And so these compute clients that run in software uh, can read and write over the network and using the API model in High Redis and all the traffic's flowing over the network switch to get into the tables that are in the database server. And so if we look at the bandwidth going into the key value tables, We've got a total of 40 gigs on each of the FPGA cards and 50 gigs on the mezzanine NIC. So the cross section here is we have 170 gigabits per second coming into each server. And so all these compute clients, and there can be thousands or, or more compute clients, are all writing data over ethernet to get data in and out of the key value store. So let's talk a little bit about optimizing client software. And so kernel bypass is a technique where user applications can bypass the network kernel 
So whereas typically applications that run, use sockets talk to the operating system kernel that implements the TCP stack that talks to network adapter, is that with kernel bypass, applications write directly to the NIC. And so using cloud onload from SolarFlare, now Xilinx, is that applications can write data directly down to the NIC that goes over the network. And so a Redis benchmark was run, and so SolarFlare exercised the cloud onload, and they ran Redis benchmark and Redis server on two nodes. And in the white paper, SolarFlare cloud onload Redis cookbook issue two, they document how they collected benchmarks with Redis benchmark talking to Redis server doing sets and gets over the network with this kernel bypass cloud running both on the client and on the server and the results from the next. So the throughput that they measured by running Redis and software with the cloud onload stack is that first of all, they compared running without onload and running with onload. So what they found is that when they ran the traffic through the network kernel, it was slower than when they ran it through the kernel bypass. In fact, about twice as fast by bypassing the kernel. And so this is the parameters they ran on the client and on the server. So it's Redis benchmark and Redis server. And this is the parameters for the benchmark that they ran. And the results that they got was that once they had about a dozen instances of Redis running, so each of these are running on each of the processors threads, is that beyond about a dozen threads, they could saturate the network link. And with kernel bypass onload running, they can do about 20 million IOPS per 25 gig port. And so with a NIC that has two ports um, and with a couple dozen processor cores loaded up, you can get 40 million IOPS on two of these 25 gig links. And so that's the software throughput. And for more details on this, I uh, recommend reading the, the white paper, which is online, that goes into detail about the system setup for this. So now let's talk about the throughput of the AlgoLogic key value store. So the AlgoLogic KVS, uh, when operating on the hardest case, which is the minimum size object, so this is a 12-byte key and a 12-byte value, and then there's the 8-byte header that has the opcode to identify if it's a set or get request. Uh, we can pack multiple messages, gets or sets, into a single packet. And so if we put 44 gets into a packet, and then we put some headers in front of it, so if you use an Ethernet, an IP, and a UDP header, is that we end up with a total packet size with the headers plus the 44 messages. That's 1466 bytes, which is just under the standard MTU size for an Ethernet packet. So on the wire, what the packet looks like is it has an Ethernet header, an IP header, UDP header, an OCSM header, and then a number of opcodes that have each of the set get operations to fill up the rest of the packet. If you amortize all the bytes and this entire packet, including the headers across the 44 operands that fit in there, you get about 33 and a third bytes per get command on average. And so the key value store, we can saturate each of the SFP plus ports at full line rate. And so with an average of 33.3 .3 bytes per get operation, we can do 37 and a half million gets per second per port per SFP plus port. And then since we have four of these ports, that breakout cable gives us four ports per card, we get 150 million gets per second per FPGA card. And because in that Dell server, we can fit three of these U50 cards, we get a total of three times that, which is 450 million gets per second per server. So the FPGA is contributing 450 million gets per second per server. And so this is what it looks like. This is our top of rack switch. And so we have these 12 uh, ports that come from the three FPGA cards. So each FPGA card has a QSFP adapter, breaks out to four SFP plus ports. And there's three cards, so there's 12 ports coming in from the U50 cards. And then we have the two NIC cards going to the mezzanine NIC that goes to software. So those are those two. And so in total, we end up with a one use server, which is the below this top of rack switch, that has that can handle 450 million IOPS coming from the three FPGA cards, 40 million IOPS coming from software. So we get 400 
and 90 million IOPS in this 1U server. And all that's just in this 1U rack mount server. So let's look at how this scales. So we have about 490 million IOPS, which is about a half a billion IOPS per 1U server right now with the solution that we just talked about. Um, the total bandwidth going up from each server is 12 times 10 gig and 2 times 25 gig. So it's 170 gigabits per server. And the hardware in each of these boxes is two CPUs and three FPGA cards and one NIC. And so if we want to scale this, if we need more than a half a billion IOPS, we can get to a billion IOPS just with two of these, two instances of these servers, which would occupy two U's of rack space. Uh, we can scale, we're working right now on scaling our key value store that runs in the FPGA, not to run at 10 gig, but to run at 25 gig. And so with that, instead of running each of the 10 gig ports at 10, we're running each at 25 gig, so it's two and a half times faster. And so with that, now all the ports are at 25 gig, which gets us to 350 gigabits per server. And so we can have 350 gigabits coming out of each of these 1U rack servers that we can saturate with line rate key value store operations. So with these minimum size packets, minimum size operations. So it's fully loaded. And so with that, we're up to about a billion IOPS in each of the 1U servers by running at 25 gig. Now, if we scale that up to a whole rack full of servers, and with 40 servers in a rack, and at just over a gigabit or 1 billion IOPS per server, that gets us to 46 billion IOPS per rack. And that's with the total hardware footprint of just 80 CPUs, 120 FPGA cards, and 40 NICs. That in total, that system is providing line rate application workload of 350 gigabits per server times 40. So we're loading up the switch now with 14 terabits per second per rack of usable key value store workload. So it's a massive throughput that we have available and just a small footprint in our data center. What do we do with this? So Algologic has been working for quite some time on a key value store for doing real-time data fusion and analytics. And so a separate product we have are black diamonds and green diamonds that are edge devices that collect data from sensors at the edge of the network. And so these devices stream data into a key value store. And so there can be thousands of these, of these edge devices writing data continuously into the key value store. So the key value store always has live value data that's being updated from the edge. And we're doing real-time analytics on that data. And so to do the real-time analytics, we have other processes that are running either in software in CPUs or in virtual machines or containers to pull data out, operate on it to take key value inputs, values from multiple places, operate on them, do inference, do analytics, and write it back into the key value store. That can be done in software. It can also be done in other FPGA compute engines. So to see the data, we have multiple dashboards. And so one dashboard is just our web-based dashboard where we can visualize and see the individual key value pairs. And so in a tabular form, we can look at multiple KVS entries that are in the key value store. Um, we can also look at the time history of these data. So we can do charts and graphs and look at how this data is moving. And so here we, we're seeing time history of uh, different chart representations of the data in the key value store. Uh, but there's a lot of data in the KVS. And so one of the newest visualizations that we've developed is by working with a game engine 3D game engine is that we can inter interactively pull data out of the key value store and write data back in the key value store from 3D game engines. And so this interactive 3D kind of extended reality lets us model, for example, a connected city where we might have millions of people, millions of cars, millions of IoT devices that are all streaming, some physical devices that are streaming data in, some virtual devices that are operating on data and so we can have cars that are driving in this connected city, drones that fly in the connected city, and all these devices can see each other and they can see the, the data that's coming in. So for example, here on this bridge, we're looking at the motion of the bridge, the acceleration in three dimensions, X, Y, Z. And so we can visualize the IoT data coming into the key value store in real time, in 3D, 
uh, in real time at full frame rate with these IO with these clients that are pulling data out of the key value store. Um, we also have an energy management system where we're taking all of the data, all the things that generate power and all the things that consume power and operating on that solving voltage and current equations so that we can optimize the use of energy in a, in a connected city. And so then we're sending control data back out to say, decide when to charge up electric cars, um, when to control other actuators in the city. In the city. And so at the heart of all of this is this real-time key value store. And as you can see, having this be large, being able to scale to handle millions of devices that are changing continuously, and having minimum latency and maximum throughput is really critical to make all this work. And so this is our use case that we have uh, in our real-time data fusion analytics, is this connected city and energy management system. So in conclusion, so FPGAs can massively increase the network attached speed for key value store. You can bump up the throughput to billions of IO operations per second. Um, these cloud onload NICs can let software access this database without the overhead of passing through an operating system kernel. That helps in software throughput. So we can pack a 1U Dell server with FPGAs, and it can handle right now 490 million IO operations per second, so half a billion IOPS in a Dell server with three FPGA cards. Um, we're using the key value store today to do sensor fusion and real-time analytics in our connected city and to manage energy flows in our renewable energy system. And so Algologic's key value store solution is a solution that we're making available today as a pre-configured Dell server. And also available, we have a monthly service where we have KVS systems that are on a high-speed network and we provide VPN access to those KVS, VP, KVS tables in the cloud uh, and this is 4, 000, just under $5,000 a month. So for more information, uh, contact us. Thank you. Uh, details are available on algologic.com slash KVS. Um, we thank our partners, Xilinx and Dell and CC Integration. And of course, we're happy to be here at the Redis conference so we can talk about providing a complete solution that can make all of this available today. Thank you.